hello to the new Sola Ford Ranger. When Ford brought this thing back for the 2019 model year, we just knew we had to get our hands on one. I mean, on paper, this thing is going to be a fantastic off-road and overlanding machine. The FX4 package comes with a tuned off-road suspension, lockers, skid plates, terrain management. This thing has it all. But we are creatures of habit here over at Sola, so it can't stay stock for long. All right, so we are over here at the Sola shop and we are about to put the Ranger under the knife. I am joined with Dylan Boudreaux. How are you doing today? What's going on, guys? I'm doing great, man. How are you? We've got I, new parts on the table. I know. I'm excited, man. I think that the only, only problem I've got with this truck, honestly, is the stance. I mean, from the factory, it rides okay. It's, I'm not gonna say, it, it doesn't ride as well as the Grand Cherokee. Granted, the Grand Cherokee was in, Bil it had Bilstein 5100s on it. Okay. Uh, it uh, I think uh, Nivamet is how you pronounce the low leveling rear I think shocks. Yeah, your air shocks were bad. Yeah, no, it was, it was a fantastic ride. This ride's a little more truck-like. And it not is this a truck. <laughs> <laughs> Different video. Okay, so my, my thought process is, all right, we're not gonna go super expensive on this. Yeah. I'd like to build this like someone that just bought a new truck would build it, all right? So, like I, exactly. I don't want to spend a whole bunch of money, all right? Yeah. A, a lot of people, they go straight into, you know, uh, spring lift, get some new struts, get some new shocks, a whole nine yards. You're looking at anywhere between five to $1,200 for mid-tier stuff. Okay, so where are we at here? So I talked to a couple of guys over at Faction Fab and they sent us over these really cool billet spacers for the front. It's like two and a half inches of lift. It's not crazy. Okay. You don't have to do a diff drop. You don't have to do anything. In fact, you don't even have to break down the strut. Oh, okay. This would be much easier than the Grand Cherokee. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're just going to rip the front strut with the spring still on it out that the front is. of the truck. These bolt on top. Then you bolt it back in, you're done. Okay. My favorite part, 80, 90 bucks, depending on where you're shopping. Not including shipping, not including tax. But it matter though, that, that is an easy first mod for anybody with this truck. I mean, and it's an order of magnitude cheaper than going with like an iBox series. Like, yeah. I mean, that it, that's a no brainer. If, if all you want is a little bit of lift, you could fit a bigger tire on it with two, two and a half inches of lift. In my opinion, only reason you wouldn't go this route is if you don't have the FX4 package. Okay. So if you do, if you have like less than an FX4 package, you would be going with this lift, but also possibly a new set of truck. Or on the other hand, you can find someone that uh, upgraded their FX4 this and true. just buy their stuff off of them, put this on top, and you got a, a better off-road ride and you're higher. Yeah, just do takeoffs. Exactly. And have a really, really cheap way to start out. While we're in there, we're taking the front tires off. I figured might as well take the back tires off too and throw on a set of wheel spacers. I, okay. A lot of people don't like them um, and they get a bad rap, honestly. And now, so these are from Faction Fab as well. These are forged inch spacers. All right, so they're gonna move each tire out away from the vehicle by about an inch. Main reason these get a bad rap is there's a lot of horror stories from the early days of wheeling where people put like four, five inch spacers and they cracked, they split on the trail. Yeah, that's a lot of extra stress on all of the, your original studs here. Exactly. The reason why I, I wanted spacers instead of changing out the wheels is, have you looked at the prices of wheels lately? I did, but I bought some really cheap wheels. And even cheap wheels with a set of good tires for me was about two thousand dollars. Two grand. I think and that's seventy dollars a rim. There's no sense and if you've got if you've got good tires, alright, you got good tires, your wheels aren't completely destroyed, and you just want that extra look, throw yeah. these on there. Or if you like your wheels, you want it to stand out a little bit more to fit a wider tire, you don't have to change out your wheels, just throw on some spacers. Okay. So how much is this gonna be poking out of your body? Because I know but look at your truck now, you're really close to in line with your factory flares. Are you gonna have to add any kind of flare to this? I'm hoping not, but I have a feeling I will need to add some. I think with these inch uh, spacers, we'll probably sit at, uh, I don't know, maybe a half inch outside at the lowest part. I think uh, it'll be flush at the top. Eh, it'll be fine. Yeah, only one way to find out. Throw the parts on there. Then we fast forward. Let's get to cracking, man. Let's get this yeah. thing in the air. Let's do it. All right, so the tires are off the truck. Now it's time to get into the front lift. Pretty straightforward, just have to disconnect our upper control arm. A couple odds and ends, sway bar's gotta come off for the most part. You need to disconnect it at the end link or at the bracket to the frame, doesn't really matter. Just can't put too much stress on it. So while I'm doing this, I guess Dylan is gonna knock out our uh, spacers on the back and uh, yeah, see if we can't make quick work of this.
All right, so everything's unbolted. The hardest part is getting this thing out of there. And easiest way we found to take this thing out is to just bounce on the lower control arm and it'll work itself out. So just be careful. You don't put too much bounce on the CV because you can mess them up significantly. Earlier, we busted the in link to the sway bar because we were confident we can get it out without uh, disconnecting it and we were wrong. So disconnect everything, don't risk it. All right, lift kit is installed. Just gotta go back, make sure everything is tight. Just do double checks, uh, make sure everything was Loctited that was supposed to be Loctited. And uh, figure while we're in here, go ahead and throw the wheel spacers on the front. They're already on the back. So uh, I haven't actually got to see how these work on here. So this part of the hub, these little fingers that come out should fit pretty snugly inside this chamfer section. And then this, uh, this raised ridge should pretty much act as if it were these fingers to the wheel. So let's pop this on and it should be pretty snug on there. Oh, yes indeed. So it's, it's gonna wobble a little bit just because it doesn't have the lug nuts in, but that is almost zero play on the hub. That is, that's pretty skookum. So I guess uh, go ahead and put these on. Gonna have to lower the car, stand on the brake to torque them, but I mean, th this is probably the simplest mod that you can do and just completely transform the look of your truck. And you know what, while we're in here, and the truck's in the air, I think we're gonna go ahead and remove this air dam and the running boards and just give it that little bit of extra off-roadiness. So let's do it. All right, so. Truck is done. Well, done-ish. I'm excited, man. I can't wait to see it on the ground. So let, let's let's do a quick recap. Yep. All right. So we took the uh, front air dams off. Yep. All right. We uh, took the running boards off. Very easy. Yeah, I know that was actually very surprising. Six bolts aside. I mean, it, it was a little awkward to do it on the lift. Honestly, it probably would have been easier to do on the ground. So what else we did? So the lift, the lift was surprisingly easy. Um, Wasn't bad. I mean, only issue we ran into it was uh, it needed like three, four pairs of hands to get in there. And I mean, to tell there's a fifth hand, I think, somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah. Truth be told, the lift you could probably you can do that at home, right? Yeah, afternoon. Yeah, you might have a buddy over just for like moral support and helping get that. We did. Control we arm. did need a second body every now and then to pull the bottom control arm down yeah. a little extra weight. If you if you had your neighbor come over, your buddy drinking drinking your beer while you're wrenching. Yeah. No, no reason you can't do this at the house. Yeah, at house, the afternoon, couple hours. Yeah, just two, have to bring it to the shop and get it aligned. People. You could probably knock all of this out in about two, 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 three hours. Easy. Yeah. yeah, it depends on how much beer you had, I guess. We finished the project fast enough to day drink. This is the first. This is this the first. Is the but, first. But we also haven't seen it on the ground yet. We can put it on the ground uh, and the wheels fall. Mm, mm, that's I fine, mean, that's fine. Don't worry about that. You want to flip the switch and uh, get this thing on the ground? Let's do it. All right. I know what you do. Holy cow, the difference that a lift and some wheel spacers can make. This thing is perfectly stanced and exactly what we were looking for. Two and a half inches in the front, one inch wheel spacers. I mean, this is how it should have came from the factory. Fantastic work by the guys over at Faction Fab. They really helped us out on this one. So please, if y'all are looking for some quality parts to go on your Ranger, please go give them a shout. They will gladly help you out. So until next time, I'm Nick with Soul Outdoors and I'll see you guys out on the trail.